There's a new piece, and this dovetails with the IMF thing. New piece in Al Jazeera English, uh, written by a guy named Jason Hickel, who's an advisor on a project called The Rules, who a friend of mine actually directs. And the point of The Rules is to actually reverse poverty globally, not to ameliorate it, not to chew at the edges of it, but to get rid of it by real land reform, by real global tax policy that doesn't reward oligarchy and plutocracy. So it's a fundamental rethinking of the foundations of our global, local, and national institutions. And he has a new piece out called The New Shock Doctrine, Doing Business with the World Bank. So the World Bank and the IMF have both sort of gotten the message to a degree that when their brands are associated with going to a country that needs a loan because the country is compressed uh, and has nowhere else to turn, and they go to said country and they say, as an example, oh, looks like your elites blew up your manufacturing sector, uh, you can't get any economic traction, we'll give you a loan, but along with that loan, you need to cut your wages, you need to cut investment in health, infrastructure, and education. And you need to write rules that are, regular, that are favorable to uh, foreign direct investment. So now what, the, well, now what the World Bank does is the World Bank has tried to separate themselves from that process somewhat by releasing this report called the Doing Business Report. They released the first one of these in 2003. And what this is supposed to be for the World Bank is an objective monitor of just who the World Bank would like to do business with, who the global business community would like to do business with in the developing world. Now, it should come as no surprise that there's a pretty dark side to doing business. Take one indicator, employees and work, the employees and workers indicator. According to the report, Countries are scored down for having laws that require minimum wages, paid vacations, and overtime rates. They also get docked for requiring employers to pay severance packages to entrenched workers. According to Doing Business, all of these, quote, count as red tape that need to be abolished. There's also a getting credit indicator. Sounds fair enough, but the name is misleading. In fact, it's all about making it easier for money lenders to recollect debts at all costs, as the author points out, Hickel points out. I think this is important for a couple of reasons. I wanted to highlight this because I thought it was so appropriate to come after the IMF story where they would still actually be pushing an austerity package, even in a situation as vulnerable as Ukraine. So you can imagine the packages that are still being sold regularly to places that aren't on geopolitical fault lines. And the other very important thing about this is I, I, I think I, I understand, particularly for an audience like this, things like the shock doctrine uh, and development policies like that, there's, there's nothing new in some respects. We know that there's a push to lower standards. We know that it's opposed to workers' rights. We know that it's opposed to fundamental reform. We know that it's not good for the environment. But the parallel track of this doing business report and the IMF austerity package and the TPP and frankly, the agenda of many domestically within the United States and Europe who want to lower wages and lower standards as they have been doing, there's two really important uh, uh, distinctions to note. One is the language of red tape and efficiency. So it becomes abstracted. Look what gets swept under the rug of who doesn't want efficiency? Who doesn't want to cut red tape? Who doesn't want things to work better? Well, how do we conceptualize how things work? What is working better? Working better is always, it seems to be, at the advantage of a small section of capital and a small section of interests. And I just think that that's very important because those lines of debate and framing of issues, we still hear all the time. It's related to talking about terrorizing a homeless community as a beautification project. I think that's an incredibly important distinction to really zero in on. And then related to that 
all of these things ultimately are not really about, you know, it's not a debate about free trade. It's not a debate about investment. It's not a debate about having global financial institution. All of these things we're going to and should have. It's a debate really about regulation because these are not deregulatory measures. These are regulatory measures and they regulate in favor of pre-established corporate interests. That is the agenda. That's what the Doing Business Report is. That's why higher wages are bad. That's why severance packages are bad. So these things are still going on, uh, and, and it's time for a real fundamental rethink. And in most places in the developing world that have shifted away from these policies are getting better performance, but there's still a lot of pressure to implement them. <laughs>